Hello, my name is Deborah, and welcome to today's reflection for the 3rd of March. And today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 to 28. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Now, Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the twelve aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down, asked a favour of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. My biggest challenge for today has been to try and write a short reflection on this passage when whole sermon series have been written about it. And Matthew certainly covers a lot of ground in these 12 verses of scripture. And we've got Jesus telling his disciples for the third time what is going to happen to him. And this time he doesn't spare them any of the, of the, of the agonising details. He spells it out that he will be handed over to the Gentiles, mocked, flogged and crucified. We've got a case study in pushy parenting from Salome, otherwise known as Mrs Zebedee. She wants the best for her boys. She's got ambitions for them. She asks Jesus for a favour on behalf of her sons, James and John. She asks if they can sit at the top table with him when he comes to power in his kingdom. It's not clear if she's acting on her own initiative to the accompaniment of groans of oh mum don't, from James and John in the background, or if the boys have put her up to it, because they've certainly asked the same question of Jesus before. And we've got Jesus giving some amazing teaching on what it means to be great in God's eyes, on the qualities of leadership, and what ambition looks like in God's kingdom. Jesus is really trying to hammer home the difference between kingdom values and worldly values. But I've chosen instead to focus on three things that Jesus says in this passage and to invite you to reflect with me and what Jesus might be saying to us individually today. In verse 21, Jesus says to Mrs Zebedee, what is it you want? This seems to be an important question for Jesus and he asks it several times during his ministry. In fact, straight after this incident, Jesus encounters Bartimaeus and another blind man on the outskirts of Jericho. When they shout after him to attract his attention, it must have been obvious to Jesus that they were blind, but he still asks them the question, what do you want me to do for you? What do we want Jesus to do for us at this current time? Today, in fact. Have we prayed about it? Have we asked God for his help? We know that wanting something doesn't always mean we get something. But we also know that if we ask God for a fish, he won't give us a snake. But perhaps we've prayed about something and we don't like the answer that's come back. Is God wanting us to let go of that request? Or is he asking us to be persistent in prayer? In verse 22, Jesus says to James and John, can you drink the cup I am going to drink? The image of the cup is the same image that Jesus uses in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prays to God his Father, 
if it be your will, take this cup away from me. This is the cup that holds the sins of the whole world. Adam and Eve's rebellion, Abraham's lies, David's adultery, Peter's denials, and the things we've said and done this week that we ought not to have done. Jesus was the only person who ever had to drink to the bottom of that cup, on the cross, to pay the price for the sins of the whole world. But as Christians, we are called to share in his suffering for a world that is still out of joint and broken. When we look around us, suffering doesn't seem very evenly distributed, does it? And sharing in Jesus' suffering will mean different things for each of us. Lent is a time when we traditionally think about Jesus' suffering and his sacrifice, and in very small ways enter into it. What is Lent like for us this year? I've heard a few Christian commentators say that life is hard enough in lockdown and that perhaps it's not the year for denying ourselves further in Lent. Is that how we feel? But I wonder, do we recognise that we are sharing in Jesus' cup of suffering when we bite our lip and turn the other cheek? When we go out of our way to do something for somebody and keep quiet about it? When we don't get thanked for something we've done? When people mock our faith? When we keep our own hurts and pains to ourselves to avoid worrying others? When we practice sacrificial love? In verses 26 and 27, Jesus says, Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. This is Jesus once again turning things inside out, upside down and back to front, showing us that his kingdom, the kingdom we pray to come every time we say the Lord's Prayer, is very different. Jesus' definition of greatness has nothing to do with success as we know it, with reputation or wealth. It has nothing to do with climbing up the social ladder, with self-promotion or getting the best for number one. It's all about learning to serve, putting the needs of others first and our own last. Jesus was at the beck and call of so many people, the servant of all, never putting himself first often overwhelmed by the sheer numbers of people who wanted a bit of him, exhausted by it. But that is what love looks like, and it is the way Jesus shows the love of God amongst us. So what does it mean to live as a servant and a slave in our everyday lives? What does it mean in our home lives and within our families, in our working lives, in our church lives, in a pandemic where our freedoms are so curtailed. Shall we pray? Father, we pray that you will continually refine us, retrain us, re-educate us in the ways of your kingdom. Help us to discover for ourselves that in serving you, we will find perfect freedom. Amen.